Welcome back to Code Emily. Today we're going to talk about custom hooks. Custom hooks can be incredibly confusing, but when simplified, custom hooks are just functions that may include React hooks. Also typically start with the word use. If you don't start with the word use, React won't check for potential violations of rules of hooks, which could cause you problems. Let's create our own custom hook. Here I have an app up and running using V. On the left I have my code and on the right I have my browser. This app.jsx file is the root of the project where I'm rendering out a component called Pokemon List. We open up Pokemon List. This is where we have a fetch of the Pokemon API that then renders out this Pokemon data that you're seeing on the right side. Our use effect gets called on the first render of this component and only the first render. And that's because we have this empty dependency array. If we didn't have this, it would get called every single time the component renders or if we had any variables inside of this dependency array, it would get called whenever that variable state changes. So what we're doing inside of this use effect is fetching this API, setting the response to the correct JSON format, and then updating the Pokemon data state, which we've set right up above with this use state. So when we first come into this component, Pokemon data is set to null. And then inside of this use effect, we're fetching and then updating that state to be whatever is coming from the API. At that point, the component re-renders and then we get all of our data displayed nicely in the browser. So where do custom hooks come into this? What if we wanted to extract this logic up here into its own file? Say our component maybe was getting a little bit out of hand, there was a lot going on, we wanted to put it in its own file. We could use a custom hook for that. If I go into my project, I'm going to create a new folder, hooks. I'm gonna create a new file. I'm just gonna call it use Pokemon data. All custom hooks are, are functions that we can use React hooks inside of. So I'm gonna call this function use Pokemon data. I'm just gonna make this a regular function. There's not gonna be any variables that are coming into it, at least not for now. We'll build on this example as we go. And I'm gonna go back into our Pokemon list component and I'm just gonna copy this code that we talked about extracting. So copying that, and I'm just gonna paste it right into here. The only thing that we need to output is actually just this Pokemon data variable. So what I'm gonna to add to this function is just the word return, and I'm gonna return Pokemon data. And I'm gonna add export default use Pokemon data so that I can import it into Pokemon list. So if we go into Pokemon list, we can then import use Pokemon data from Oops, slash. And then what I can do is actually just get rid of all of this. And what I'm going to say is const Pokemon data equals use Pokemon data and call that function. And now I also can get rid of this use state and use effect from the top of this file. And now we have our hooks extracted into its own separate file called use Pokemon data. Amazing. But what if we also wanted to add a loading state? We can do that within our custom hook. So if I go back to use Pokemon data, I'm gonna add a loading state. So I'm gonna say const is loading, comma set is loading. And I'll say use state false. Inside of our use effect, we'll do set is loading and we'll set this equal to true. So now it is loading before we do our fetch. Then we need to set is loading to false once the API fetch completes. So we can update this arrow function to be a regular function with curly braces. And we'll add right here, set is loading to false. We added this loading state, awesome, but we're not actually doing anything with it yet. We need to return is loading and Pokemon data. How do we do that? With an array. So instead of just returning Pokemon data here, we're actually gonna return an array of two values. Those values are going to be Pokemon data and is loading. So now we have a bit of an error and that's because if we go back into our Pokemon list, this is no longer correct. We need to actually destructure these items from that array that we are returning. I have a video that I'll link up above and in the description all about array destructuring, but the way it works is we add an array here. We can call these variables anything that we want to, but in our case, Pokemon data and is loading make the most sense. So I'm gonna call this Pokemon data comma is loading. I'm gonna add a console.log here. I'm gonna say Pokemon data comma is loading. And then if we go into our dev tools, into the console, we'll see that originally when this loads up, go back into our hook, we have null and false, and then we have null and true, and that's when we set is loaded to true. And then 
we have the data and we have loading set to false. Now I'm going to add one more piece of code just for this loading state. So I'm just going to say is loading and just print out a div that says loading dot dot dot. We won't actually see this loading state because it's too fast, but it's important to have a loading state when you're fetching APIs because sometimes they're not that fast. But what if we took this example one step further? I actually happen to have a component that I wrote called Pokemon. Inside of this Pokemon component, we're doing essentially the exact same thing that we were doing at the top of the other component, if you recall. We have this loading state, we have data state, and then inside of the use effect, we're setting the loading state to true, fetching, and then updating the data and the loading state after the fetch is complete. Let's quickly just replace this H4 with the component that I have written called Pokemon. And Pokemon is expecting two props, name and URL. So I'll update this to say name equals Pokemon.name. Then URL is Pokemon.URL. And quickly, let me just show you exactly why that is. And that's because our Pokemon list here inside of results, we have name and URL. I also can update this and have this just be one line of JSX. Let me just quickly add a little bit of behind the curtain CSS. Yay, we have a bunch of Pokemon and we have pictures and all this cool stuff. And that's because the URL that I input here is what's coming back from that API in this results tab. This URL is more data about each individual Pokemon. And that's what we have inside of this Pokemon component that we're now using. So what's really cool that we can do now is we can replace this logic with our use Pokemon data hook. We need to do a couple of things, however. Inside of use Pokemon data, we have a URL that's going to change. It's going to be different for each component. So we need to actually add a variable for our hook. And that variable is going to be URL. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do is just have URL up here. And I'm going to replace this with URL. And I'm going to go back into Pokemon list. And when we call Pokemon data here, I'm going to actually put in that variable, the URL variable. So I'm going to put that there. Awesome. You can see it's still all loading correctly. Let me just condense this down a little bit. Great. So if I go into Pokemon, we can see that this is the exact same logic. We have this is loading state. We have this data. We have the use effect. So we can replace this with use Pokemon data. So what I'm going to do is delete all of this code we're gonna replace it with essentially exactly what we have going on in Pokemon list. So I'm gonna write const Pokemon details data. Cause like I said, we can update that variable name to be anything that we want. And on this page, Pokemon details data is a better variable name. Pokemon details data comma is loading equals use Pokemon data and then for that variable, we'll have that URL that we already have in our component as a prop. And now you can see that it's still rendering the exact same way. Now we've written a custom hook that's reusable for both Pokemon and Pokemon list. We also can get rid of that line. So that's really the benefits of custom hooks is when you can reuse that hook other places. When you're building out custom hooks within your own app, you want to be really careful of adding too many and really cluttering up your code base. So I definitely recommend being a little bit cautious about creating too many custom hooks, but implementing where they're necessary. If you think that it could make your code a little bit easier to read, and also if you see a lot of patterns similar to the ones we just saw, definitely consider adding a custom hook. Let me know if I answered all your questions about custom hooks. I'd be happy to do another video on these. They're a lot of fun and it took me a long time to realize they're a lot simpler than they seem. And if you like this video, as always, just consider subscribing or liking the video. I really, really appreciate it. And on that note, see you next week. Bye.